Unless my cinematic memories playing tricks on me, movies were bigger when I was smaller. It was an age of epics, with the proverbial cast of thousands. Movies like Ben-Hur, Spartacus and The Ten Commandments. Well, the good news is they're back, bigger and better than ever. The latest epic is Troy, that fabled ancient stoush between the Greeks and the Trojans. And its credentials are pretty impressive. The storylines from none other than Homer, the ancient Greek poet, and the cast of thousands includes Brad Pitt, to Orlando Bloom, Peter O'Toole, and, wait for it, our very own Eric Banner. All my life, I've lived by a code. And the code is simple. One of the gods, love your woman, and defend your country. Three and a half thousand years ago, the battle for Troy was the epic that begat all other epics. Oh! Good to see you. Ancient Greek poet Homer, this is a primal story of heroism and valour, lust and deceit. You'd let Troy burn for this woman? Eventually it become a Hollywood movie. Modern day heroes like Brad Pitt, Orlando Bloom, Peter O'Toole, and even further from home than those Greek invaders, Australian actor Eric Banner. Troy's mother to us all! Fight for her! It must be Quite extraordinary for you. Uh, little Aussie battler, right there on the plains of Troy, surrounded by Peter O'Toole and all those other names. <laughs> it was, and I, that wasn't lost on me. I mean, not a day went by when you know I wasn't scratching myself saying, this is just possibly one of the great stories of all time and one of the great opportunities, you know. I've seen this moment in my dreams. Eric Banner plays a co-starring role I'll as Hector, with the you. Trojan prince, against Brad Pitt's portrayal of Achilles, the hero of the Greeks, in the film by Wolfgang Peterson. I thought it was you I was fighting yesterday. And I wish it had been you. I read the script and loved it, and I sat down in Wolfgang Peterson's office and he said, so Eric, you read the script, you like it, so which character are you interested in playing? And I said, well, if I may say so, Hector. And he said, that's great because Brad wants to play Achilles. In other words, if you want to play Achilles, you ain't playing Achilles. Um, so it just all fell into place. Luckily, I didn't want to play the same character as Brad and he didn't want to play Hector. Um, so I was given the part. Having so amicably worked out their roles between them, the two pals then set about bashing one another up. We made a pact, 50 bucks. Every time you hit the other guy, whoever hits the other person the most gets the purse. And I walked away with, I think, three or four hundred bucks at the end of the Hector Achilles battle. A tiny little scar on my nose and um, it's a few bumps and bruises, but, you know, we knew each other well enough to not be too concerned about it. A few hundred bucks, that would supplement the small fee they gave you for playing the role. Well, exactly, exactly. I, 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 I should have declared it. <laughs> What sort of acceleration do you get in these things? Ah! Shit! Whoa! A world away in the rolling green countryside of northwest Tasmania, in the front seat of a racing car. Boom! He's not fighting Bronze Age battles. This is how Eric likes to relax. And how did you get into racing? I always loved it as a kid, and then, um, I bought my first car when I was about 14. Is that the car you've still got? Yeah, I've what still got it? it. It's an old um, 74 XB Falcon Coupe. And um, me and my buddies just work on it in spare time and it's been a bit of a project and a hobby and I just started racing that. That would have been what was known as a Hoonmobile. It still is known as a Hoonmobile. Eric is a self-confessed petrol head. Condition, he says, he contracted growing up in the Melbourne working class suburb of Tullamarine. It was all just about riding your BMX bike around the paddocks around Broadmeadows and Tullamarine to Keelor and it was a great place to grow up. Eric's Tullamarine was an ethnic melting pot which he later recaptured in his first movie The Castle in which he played Con, the Greek kickboxing accountant. Did they show a film? 
too. Yeah. And they also had oh, these really? eight music, uh, Twister. We saw Twister. Oh, and they had these was eight it on music. a screen or a telly? Uh, telly. Mm. And they had Easy Listening, mm. Classic Gold, Contemporary Rock. Was you didn't go to uni. Now, your parents had spent quite a bit of money sending you to a private school. Were they a bit worried about this? I think my mum and dad have always been a bit worried about me. Um, I think it was a huge relief to them when I said I was going to be a stand-up comedian. You know, most parents would go, <laughs> oh, what? But I think my parents went, at last, something that he wants to do. A career. A career. <laughs> he could make 60 bucks a week. That would be incredible. Um, he'll move out of home. Hello, thanks for joining us. And thank you too for the gold logie. It's a great honour, and as I said on the night, as far as I'm concerned, there's certainly no shame in being popular. Stand-up comedy much. led to sketch comedy, and it's here that it's we first got to know Eric Banner in the television series Full Frontal. Five. <laughs> what essence were you looking for in your impersonation of Ray? It's funny because it always starts out with the best intentions of being like completely accurate and then you just start getting really bloody silly with it and you end up taking this person who, who has some credibility and turning him almost into a, a kind of a clown figure. How many awards have you won <laughs> oh, in your years no, of service? No awards, Ray. Is that right? <laughs> None. You'd worry about hurting people's feelings? No, not particularly because... Um, no, no, because that's, that's not a healthy thing for a sketch comedy performer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you you're, you're only worried about not being funny. Unexpectedly, Mike Willisey dropped in. You say that you never knew how it happened. <laughs> but you did, didn't you? And he would just leave yeah, it there. That's good, that's it. And, and say nothing, and the person would just kind of be going... Does he really do impersonations at home? I, I get everyone, Charles. We yeah. get them all. We'll be getting you later. <laughs> Eric's <laughs> wife Rebecca has been his constant companion on the magic carpet ride to Hollywood. I can't even put Rebecca on video at home, you know, and uh, you've just got the first ever television interview, so... So they met while the Rebecca was on. working at Channel 7 as a publicist. Tell me about the proposal. I believe it was very romantic. Well, we were in Aspen and we were skiing, which is my favourite thing in the world to do, and it was a beautiful, beautiful, sunny day. And um, halfway down a run, Eric said, Bex, just stop for a minute. And he pulled out this ring and proposed to me. And there was no one around, which again is amazing for a skier. So it was beautiful and I said yes. Yeah, I proposed at 7,000 feet. By the time we got to 2,000 feet, the wedding was organised. <laughs> get the camera over to Bucky. Bucky, get over here. Here he is, young Bucky. Show her your tattoo, Buck. Hoik it up. King Kong. Filming the true life story, oh, uh, Chopper, in the late 90s was a dramatic turnaround for a young comedian. This was much more than an impersonation of the notorious Mark Chopper Reed. Eric delivered one of the most convincing and frightening performances in an Australian film. <laughs> did you study him? I did. You absolutely. spent time with him? Yes. Yeah. How much time? A couple of days. Got a razor blade, you wrapped it in toilet paper. Something How did you work up the character and the voice? I find the voice is a, 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 a pretty instinctual. Do you want to slide? Oh, I said, oh, for God's sake, I said, just rip him off. The thing that helps when you meet someone is you get a, you get a sense of the rhythm. So initially you might you might think to yourself, well, geez, I reckon I have a pretty good bloody go at the voice. And then what happens is you meet them and then you start being able to get the rhythms. You get the rhythms and you start working on it. You know what I mean? And then you just, I don't know, obviously the more research you do and the more you, you look into these things, the, the stronger your performance gets. Yeah, well, it'll be very good, won't it? Yeah. Hey? Yeah. yeah. Bye. Bye. I know how to become other people. I don't necessarily know how to act. You don't think we should be here? You know what I think? It don't really matter what I think. If Banner's chopper impressed the Australian critics, it also impressed Hollywood. In particular, the big time director, Ridley Scott, who cast Eric in the war movie, Black Hawk Down. 
remember the phone ringing at home and my wife saying, it's, it's Ridley Scott. <laughs> and much to my astonishment said, right, so I have this character, right, great, hoot, uh, like you to play him. Uh, do you think you'd like to do that, right? And I said, I think I'd really like to do that. The next time Hollywood phoned, it was to play the starring role in The Hulk for the Hong Kong maestro, Ang Lee. He's an amazing guy, Ang Lee. Come on, I'm going for an impersonation. Oh, uh, Eric, I think what we need to do, you move your chin down a little bit and we do one more take. 700 takes later, okay, it's good, it's good, we do one more. I've enjoyed this because I feel like I've talked to many people. Right. Not just one it's person. cheap television. Yeah, you've it? spoken to everyone except for Eric. It's great. <laughs> yeah. I've loved it. You know that this is a, an investigative program, don't you? I, absolutely. And I'm we never do an interview you. unless we've got something on someone. Okay, bring it you on. You have been masquerading, I put it to you, yeah. under an assumed name for a long time now. Right, right. Can we know your real name, please? Ooh, that's a tricky one. It's longer than, than Banner. Yeah. Look, I'll try it myself, but I might not pronounce it properly. <laughs> you can have a crack. Anna Danovic. Very close, very close. It's Croatian. Everyone goes, Banner, what is it? Is it Italian? Is it Greek? Is it... It's Croatian. Dad's Croatian. Your mum's German? Yes. This is an interesting mix, really, isn't it? It is. It's a good, it's a, it's a good little cocktail. It, it provides some interesting genes. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. Ancient Greeks believed that fame could be a curse. Take yourself too seriously, they said, and the gods will bring you down. You come here uninvited. Go back to your ships and go home. So far, no sign of that in the stellar career of Eric Bandanovich from Tullamarine. Ask him about success, and he refers us to an earlier Australian film, The Nugget, about a bunch of ordinary blokes who strike it rich. Excuse me, mate. Can we get another one of those Mongolian hot pots? It's one of my favourite scenes, I think, in any movie. Um, when Lotto takes all his friends out for dinner and you really know that, that something special has happened because he orders not one but two Mongolian hot pots. <laughs> and that's what it's come down to for him. And I think no matter who you are, there are always those kind of things that it comes well, down to. Well, we just ordered the second Mongolian hot pot and that says to me, we've made it. What do you reckon, fellas? Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. 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 I reckon you got to the stage now where you can always have two Mongolian oh, hot I've, pots. I've sometimes ordered three. <laughs> now that's success, isn't it? <laughs> you know, you've really made it if you could order three Mongolian hot pots and a bit of rice on the side. Hello, I'm Charles Woolley. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.